In this video, I'll explain to you how I use Blender's match moving capabilities to track and solve this shot. Now, this shot was taken with my DSLR camera last year, and I'm going to explain my workflow in tracking and solving this shot. Now, this video is a shorter version of the original two and a half hour video, which I will post in the link and where you can see how I managed to solve this shot step by step. Now in other video tutorials which I've uh, observed is that the method of using the detect features was used. Now detect features are good if your shots are quite short and uh, if the features are quite clear because I find that the detect features of uh, Blender although uh, it is quite good for speedy solves the, the process of spending time to clean up the bad tracks right will uh, take a little bit of time so from my experience uh, while working at industrial light magic uh, we tend not to use uh, automatic features which means for a lot of our trackers we have to track them manually one by one this particular shot involved the camera moving in uh, 3D space and uh, me stopping and then panning the camera from right to left. So it's a combination of a free camera and a nodal shot. So in order to track and solve this shot properly, I will have to make sure that there is enough parallax information for the software to solve. So in particular, right now I'm laying down the trackers on uh, a particular section of this shot in fact the beginning of this shot where there's a lot of forwards and sideways motion and uh, I've used different motion models to track uh, these features I've used the uh, perspective motion model uh, I also use uh, the location motion model and I also use the affine motion model really depending on the situation some of the motion models work better than the others again depending on the features so as you can see for those uh, perspective features i've actually changed the shape of the uh, the point of interest or the 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 box of interest uh, over the uh, search area so by distorting it to match the perspective uh, sometimes it gives me better results so um, if you are tracking your own shots there are a lot of factors that can determine whether your trackers will work or not and then in this case i have to add a lot of manual keyframes for this uh, particular feature because uh, there's a lot of uh, of a background change for that feature so one of the things you need to take note when you're tracking uh, specific features is to make sure that the feature doesn't change too much now this particular feature is uh, a little bit easier it's just a star and a crescent moon and I just use a simple location motion model and it tracked very easily now if you look at the top left hand corner you can see that is the dope sheet you can see the each of the manual trackers I'm tracking one by one and you can see that I'm getting more and more trackers and for the first half of this particular shot uh, I'm able to I mean I'm getting enough trackers to solve that particular section but I'm still about uh, less than halfway through uh, tracking all the different features. So here's another uh, feature that I'm trying to track which is actually uh, on this lamppost. Because the lamppost is a bit cl closer to me as, the, as a camera person and I need that extra parallax information. Now for the buildings that are further in the distance, there's a lot of features on this building that make it quite easy to track. So again, I'm just uh, going through and then finding out good features. And I'm also tracking this lamppost. Again, I, in the end, I have to put in a lot of keyframes. You can see a lot of the uh, white diamonds uh, in the dope sheet. So that those are the extra keyframes that I'm putting in in order to make sure that I'm tracking it properly. So in the end, uh, basically i will just keep on tracking uh, and then eventually i will have enough trackers uh, that will fill up the entire uh, timeline of this clip so that at any any point in time uh, i have minimum eight 
eight trackers that I can solve. And then these eight trackers, right, will have to be spread out and uh, have enough distance between them to in order to let the software solve. And here I am, I'm tracking a feature that will allow me to give, to give me enough parallax information. Okay, so I'm halfway there. As you can see, um, the beginning of this shot right, I have more than enough trackers. So it has turned gray. And then the yellow section uh, means that I have uh, enough trackers on the minimum number of trackers to solve that region. And the red zone uh, means that there's just not enough trackers to solve that particular zone. Now this footage is taken with my uh, Canon 5D Mark III and I've used the Magic Lantern software so that I am able to shoot at RAW uh, so that I can capture as much detail as I can. The only drawback is that uh, the file size, uh, the original movie file size of uh, these RAW videos are quite large and then I have to use uh, special raw software to convert them into image stills but the resulting video from shooting in raw uh, is much more detailed and uh, it makes tracking a little bit easier so if you are considering shooting your own footage it is best to make use of the uh, the best camera that you can can uh, get your hands on and then try to and when you are shooting this footage make sure that you do not uh, make sure that uh, the features are available for you to track so when I took this shot right I have to consider all these features if you do not have enough good features that can uh, allow the software to to solve your shot and then um, then you'll be very difficult if you don't have enough, uh, especially uh, features, right, that can define the uh, foreground and the background. Then the uh, the solver will take a long time to, or it might not even solve the shot for you. Because from my experience, right, uh, it really depends on the shot. If the shot, if the, ang the angle of the, the motion of the camera, right, uh, is a bit too extreme, or if there is a lot of uh, obstacles, or a lot of, uh, things that covers covers your trackers then it will just make give you a tough time to try to uh, get enough good trackers to solve okay now you can see the entire clip has reached the uh, yellow zone so I have enough trackers to solve the shot however I've encountered uh, several issues um, I'm unable to get a decent solve Okay, I was playing with a lot of variables here. I was uh, using different keyframes and uh, selecting keyframes from different portions of the uh, of the solve. And then uh, in the end, right, I also tried to add a few more trackers on uh, areas which I suspect uh, doesn't have a good solve. Because sometimes, uh, even though that you have a lot of good quality trackers, uh, the the final result might be, might give you like a false positive you might get a uh, result that you think that it is a good solve but when you finally lay out the shot you notice that the camera uh, is uh, shaking excessively as what I have discovered in this solve so it took me a while it probably took me about another 20 minutes right to to really troubleshoot this uh, this solve and you can see on the blue line at the uh, bottom below uh, Every time you see a jagged uh, blue line, that means that the, uh, the error is very bad. And uh, in the end, I resorted to adding a few more trackers and also uh, resetting the uh, refine uh, lens distortion settings and also the, uh, the focal length settings, just resetting the whole thing uh, just to solve. And also going through uh, trackers, right, which have excessively high errors trackers that have excessively excessively high errors right will also result in a bad solve so i have to go through trackers which uh, 
which after after they are being solved uh, on the dope sheet itself on the tracking dope sheet itself sometimes it will show a very high uh, high high uh, tracking error so you can you can choose those uh, tracking points and then you can actually change the uh, weight the weight value of these trackers so that uh, when they are taken into account during the solve uh, they they wouldn't uh, contribute to the error okay I think at this stage right I managed to get a very good solve and uh, I managed to see that the camera motion of the camera is good so right now I am uh, changing the colors of the trackers that are on the ground so this will help me in the layout work and at this point I'm also brought in the HDR image uh, that I took with the 360 camera and I'm realigning it okay, so that it matches the orientation of the, the scene so and uh, now I'm ready to bring in a 3D model in this case in this case I brought in a 3D model from uh, 3D paint the free uh, 3D software 3, 3D paint software from Microsoft and also I'm using EV to render the shadow catcher and uh, details are in the longer version of the video so you can watch that and then uh, see where how you can create that shadow catcher and the good the benefit about using EV of course is that the uh, rendering speeds is way much faster compared to rendering with cycles and once I got the layout done I, I did a bit of uh, some simple animation I play some 3d objects just to check that the uh, the lineup is good and also that the uh, the objects are locked down to the ground and after I finish rendering uh, this is the finished result so I hope you find this video useful and thanks for watching.